Today, I want to challenge your thinking a bit on the saxophone warm-up, what it is and how we do it, thinking not in terms of exercises, but function. So grab something to take notes with and a cup of coffee. Let's rethink the saxophone warm-up. Truth be told, I don't do a warm-up. At least I don't think about it that way. I start immediately with sound studies. Now, what is the difference between a warm-up and a sound study? I'm not really sure, and I don't think it matters. But every practice session, I always do sound studies, technical studies, and I work on my artistry. We're going to cover all these in another video coming up. But we start with sound studies, and there's no better way to start than with exercise zero. <laughs> Now, I designed exercise zero to start each practice session, not only for myself, but my students. And I will say, some of my students that have been doing it for several years now, when I ask them, what has helped your playing more than anything, they will begrudgingly say, exercise zero. And then I give them a smug look. But what we're doing here is set, breathe, and focus. I have an entire video on exercise zero. I'll put a link down below. But what I want you to do is think about setting your body, your posture, your hands, your embouchure, resting your teeth on top, removing variables of motion, Breathing, focusing on a huge breath to play low B flat, and then focusing the embouchure, your mind as well, but mostly the embouchure, but also your mind. Then each month I have my students do one variation of exercise zero, usually starting higher and descending, but still keeping that same beautiful embouchure, the big airstream, focusing, setting our fundamental of sound to that low B flat. <laughs> Now, at this point, you may be thinking it's time for long tones. Let's get to the long tones. No, I don't really do long tones, not as such. I do melodic studies. Now, melodic studies are like long tones. They have some longer notes, but it does a couple of more important things. It has intervals, steps, as melodies usually do, but we can also focus on other things, phrasing, vibrato, and some ear training that we're going to talk about in just one second. And it's generally more fun to do. Now, in this example, I'm going to do Scarborough Fair in E minor. In the Fundamentals book, we have this in all 12 keys, but why start in E minor? Well, this month, I have my students working on You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To, Art Pepper, and that is in largely E minor or G major if you're on alto, depending on how you look at it, where it ends, where it starts. That doesn't matter so much. Forget I said anything about that. They're playing in E minor, so let's match our melodic study, our warm-up, to function in the key we're doing. Now, you may be thinking, Dr. Wally, why not just do the melody to You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To and do that in multiple keys? That's copyrighted, and I, I can't give that to you here. Now here is the beauty, the hardest, but also the most important part. And bear with me, if you're a beginning player, this is gonna feel very tedious. But what I want you to do after you've played it in one key that relates to whatever music you're studying, 
Now you're doing the same key. We move it to other keys, close or related keys, not looking at the cheat sheet. Now, all the exercises are written in 12 keys in the fundamentals book, but I want you to use your ears. This is critical training for your ears and also for future improvisation, being able to hear something in your fingers with your brain, because your brain controls your fingers, knowing what to do and executing what you hear. It's slow and tedious at first, but it's the hard work that's going to really make a big difference in your playing. So here, let's do it again, but in D minor, it's a closely adjunct key. And let's see if we can do it by not looking at the sheet music, but just doing it by ear. Now, if you're an advanced player, you should do this in all 12 keys. It doesn't take very long. Choose one folk tune or one melody to put in 12 keys for each practice session. It's excellent ear training and a great way to work on your sound in multiple registers and octaves. Now, if you are a rather advanced player and you want to also continue working on the upper register, I like to take a couple of keys, put them up an octave, and work on at least low, comfortable altissimo. If you're a beginner, don't worry about this, but for advanced players, Take it into a few keys that put it into the altissimo so you can work on altissimo in a melodic structure. Now, at this point, I like to have a little bit of fun. It's okay to have fun when you're doing your sound studies or warm up. And what I like to do is long tones, and you're thinking, oh, good, here come the long tones, but slightly different. So, again, I'm working on You'd Be So Nice to Come Ho to this month with my students. So, I'm going to do some long tones in context of the song we're working on. So, mixing sound and ear training and technical studies and improvisation, but focusing on tone. So, what we're going to do is just play the roots of the chord changes and using it as a long tone study. Now here you'll also notice I'm focusing largely on the beginning of the note, the articulation, not the tonguing, but the fullness of the sound at the start of the note. And here's why. When we perceive a tone quality, we're largely interpreting the beginning and the ending of the note as what gives it its character. And this has been proved with studies. If you take a long note and record it, you chop off the attack and the release, you do it with two different instruments, a saxophone or bassoon, and you take away the attack, the beginning articulation. And by articulation, I mean the start of the sound, not necessarily just literal tonguing. It's hard to tell the difference between a bassoon or a saxophone or a synthesizer when you get rid of the attack. So, so much of the juice and how we perceive the tone quality is in the front end of the note. And you'll hear that when I'm playing these long tones over the chord changes to You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To. Then once I'm comfortable playing the roots and nice long tones, then you can experiment and have a little fun building melodies using voice leading or different chord tones. You can experiment and have fun even while you're warming up and working on your sound. Try to play long melodies over the chord changes. It should be enjoyable.
passed up optional, optional overtones. Now, if you're an advanced player, you've been playing for two, three, four, five years, I recommend you dipping your feet into overtones. I really like to do them in a horizontal fashion rather than a vertical honking out overtones with large leaps. I find we kind of get a little aggressive when we do that, some glottal punches. Don't Google that. But what I want to do is overtone scales, a linear approach. Now, if you're just a beginner, absolutely start incorporating the first one into your practice session immediately, the B flat overtone scale. Now, these, this is the way these work. I'm fingering the lower note of the exercise, but using voicing, I have an entire video on it, you can get the upper note. And this is what I like to do with overtone, especially when we're beginning our practice session. This is not to work on altissimo. This is to work on voicing and breath support. So start to do overtone scales. I have all 12 written out in the fundamentals book. Now, at this point, you've probably spent about 20 minutes working on your saxophone sound, and that's excellent. So have another cup of coffee, put a smug look on your face, and then realize it's time to do technical studies. We're gonna have many videos on that as well. So I want you to really rethink what a warm-up is. It's not blowing a few notes and getting your reed wet. Start each practice session focusing on the fundamentals of sound. The first note and the last note should have intention and beauty. You're going to have questions and I want to answer them. So this is a warm up I'm really passionate about. This is not something that a famous person said he did. And so then I'm just doing it. We've really dug in at the Saxophone Academy on the function of these and field tested them. Thousands of students over many, many, many years. And these are exercises I feel very strongly recommending. You will not be wasting your time. Remember, enjoy these. The work is the reward. So hit me up in the comments with questions and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Happy Friday, everyone, or whatever day of the week you're watching this. And most importantly, go practice. I'm going to go practice right now. I'm getting a minute. But why are you still here? Go practice. Go. Go, go practice. Well, at least pour a cup of coffee and join me. The weather's been pretty good.